and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast brought to you by AMS Media. As ever, I'm your host, Harry Simu. And on today's edition, we're going to be talking a little bit about the Premier League and what the recent government announcements mean for the competition. Now, of course, on Sunday evening, we heard from Boris Johnson. It was a really, really ambiguous message. You know, it was, yes, you can do this but we're still maintaining lockdown, et cetera, et cetera. And a lot of it to me personally didn't make sense. Now, I know there'll be some people out there who will say, actually, it was very clear. Actually, it was uh, pretty much as you were with a few minor changes uh, to what we're currently being asked to adhere to. But I think there was some ambiguity to it. And I think that that will be problematic. I think asking people in this current climate to... Um, you know, to respect the measures whilst also saying, actually, you can leave the house as many times as you want during the day for exercise and you can go to the park and you can meet with people there, um, people from outside of your household, as long as you keep the the distancing and, and all that stuff. For me, it's just asking for trouble. I don't think that the deaths have dropped to a rate yet where we can um, make these changes. And I think the fact that the rest of the UK um, are, are very quick to distance themselves from uh, Boris Johnson's sort of plan uh, it says a lot, doesn't it, about the plan. And he's been questioned by a lot of people, rightly so. Totally appreciate it's a really, really difficult job. Um, and these circumstances are unprecedented and it's not something that anybody would have had any experience of dealing with before. So in that regard, I have some sympathy for him. And I'm not saying I could do a better job, but I think that some of the statements and some of the the, the communications haven't been done in a very clear and concise way. I mean, you had Dominic Raab this morning um, going on the television and telling everybody that they could go and visit their parents and everybody was overjoyed because there are many who haven't been able to see their parents or grandparents due to the lockdown measures. And then an hour later, they said, actually, you can only meet up with one of your parents or, or God knows what the the change was, but it just seems like a complete and utter mess to me. Um, and the fact that a government in a country as, as big and as great as Britain um, are getting things so horribly wrong is a cause for concern. Now, this is not a political show. Um, and to be honest, I, I shouldn't have really spoken about that for as long as I did. But obviously, it's topical. Obviously, it's on everybody's minds at the moment. Um, so I thought it worth mentioning at least. But in the document that's been published this afternoon um, by the government, it's a 50 page document. No, I've not read it um, and I don't plan on reading the entire thing either. Um, but one point that stands out that interests all of us is that about top level sport. And of course, the government have said that providing um, we continue to make progress in the fight against this virus and providing um, that it is safe enough um, Top level sport has been given the green light to return on June the 1st. Now, what does this mean for the Premier League? It means, in my opinion, that the Premier League are going to begin now planning uh, for a return. We heard them previously say that they were looking for a June the 8th start date. Um, and, you know, if it was June the 8th, um, I think we can realistically finish the season um, probably into the first week of uh, of July, maybe, because I think that... You can play nine games in 30 days. I don't think it's that much of a um, a big target. I think it's doable. You know, you play every few days, etc. The players have had a risk. Of course, there will be fitness issues as well, though, and we expect injuries um, due to the lack of match practice. Premier League have spoken about maybe adjusting some of the rules to uh, accommodate that, i.e. five substitutes being allowed in the game as opposed to three, which are currently allowed. Um so I think that the, the, the planning process will now begin. Um, it, it's a provisional green light from the government. We've got to say that uh, it's not guaranteed. It is subject to the science. It is subject uh, to the R rate, as Boris Johnson called it, um, staying down and staying where it is and not getting any worse. But now we have this whole debate about playing at neutral venues. And this has been a debate that's been rumbling on, I think now, for, for probably a week to 10 days, where there are a significant number of clubs in the Premier League who simply do not want to play at neutral venues um, because they feel it'll be giving them a disadvantage. Now, this has angered me a little bit because I think there are far more pressing concerns at the moment, i.e. 
player safety. For me, that should be the issue that clubs are pushing back on. That should be the priority. Player safety, staff safety, can we ensure they'll be safe and in turn guarantee that their families when they go home, etc., will be safe too. That is what's most important. Not where we play the fucking games. And you're going to have to excuse my language there because it irritates me when clubs like West Ham, Brighton in particular have been very vocal about this. If I'm not mistaken, have only won four games out of their 14 at home. Four. You cannot play the home advantage card. If you weren't shit for two thirds of the season, you wouldn't be in this position. So whilst I recognise that the conditions of the competition, if it does resume, will be different. Of course, there'll be no crowds. There'll be slight rule changes. And then when you're talking about the integrity of the sport, which we keep hearing them bang on and on about, then there are some questions and there are some differences to the competition that we started in August. It won't look the same. It is impossible for it to look the same. But if you want to maintain the integrity of the sport, the games need to be played. And the only way that can happen... um, and we can minimise the risk of people getting infected by this virus, is to play them at neutral venues where the precautions can be taken, where they can be policed properly, where we can ensure that, and I'm not saying there'll be no risk whatsoever, but we can keep the risk to an absolute minimum. So if these clubs were coming out and saying, I don't feel it's safe, our players are at risk, and we don't know what the general consensus is from the players at the moment. Um, we're only going by the reports that we're reading. But for clubs to be moaning about um, you know, playing at neutral venues when they can't win a home game for shit anyway just infuriates me. And I think that the Premier League have to take one of two approaches now. I think it's either you stand up and you say, look, we cannot guarantee the competition will be played in the same way it was when it started. It's not ideal but we know that. We can't do anything about that. So we're going to cancel the season, um, in which case relegation may be postponed for a year or whatever. I I don't know what the answer is to that. Then I'll have a lot more respect um, if the Premier League just put their foot down and said, we've got to do this and this is what we're going to do. Cancel the season. Do I want the season to be cancelled? No, I don't because I'm a football fan and I miss the game desperately. And of course, I want to see uh, live football. It's affecting my livelihood at the moment. But that is nothing compared to those who have lost their lives, compared to those whose health has suffered or have had to say goodbye to loved ones, uh, you know, in a in the strangest of ways without being able to go and visit them, having to have funerals with 10 people. That is far more important than any economic Um, impact that this virus is having so cancel the league if they cancelled the league yes I'd be a little bit disappointed initially but I'd accept it and I'd move on because it feels like that is the only way that this is going to proceed and we can move on and move forward without everybody kicking up a stink alternatively the Premier League have to say we're going to continue this season we're going to play the games behind closed doors at neutral venues of our choice and if you don't like it then tough if you're you know if you're not going to play ball you will be relegated simple as that they have to show some you know some sternness some authority here and stop trying to play this game where they keep everybody happy because given the current circumstances, it is simply impossible to keep all the stakeholders happy, to keep the broadcasters happy, to keep the players happy. Something's got to give if this Premier League season is going to continue. And for me, the issue of playing at neutral venues is a small issue when you consider that even if these teams are allowed to play at home, they're going to be playing in empty stadiums. So for me, you know, This is such a stupid issue and one that should be the least of everybody's concerns. Yet this appears to be the one that is holding up the Premier League, pushing forward with their plans coming back because the government have said it's fine. So that cannot be uh, the deal breaker, in my opinion. And I think the Premier League really, really need to get um, get a grip of the situation. I understand there's a certain number of clubs that they need to agree to uh, their proposal for them to move forward, etc., etc., But they need to start making, th- not threats, but they need to start providing ultimatums. They need to start being a little bit sterner and a little bit firmer in regards to these clubs who claim that they so desperately need home advantage yet can't win home games for shit anyway. Um, that's just my view. And I know uh, there'll be people that say, oh, 
but who's to say they won't go on a run, etc. Who's to say they won't go on a run playing in an empty stadium somewhere else either? It, it, it's all ifs, it's all buts. And I just find it rich coming from clubs that, you know, particularly in West Ham's case, who sit there bitching and moaning about the fact that they have to play at the London Stadium all the time and it's not a football ground and it's shit and it's crap and it's destroyed their football club, yet now they're begging to be playing there. It just, you know, it, it's, it infuriates me to hear owners of football clubs um, and people in powerful positions within these, you know, companies as you, they are, they're companies nowadays, Using a, a global pandemic in which over 30,000 people in the UK have lost their lives to fuel their own agendas and to drive their agendas and to try and desperately get relegation off of the table because they are at risk of it and their business is at risk of, of taking a real, a real beating purely because they haven't managed it properly on the field. So stop using the pandemic. Stop using all these things to try and fuel your own agendas. The Premier League have to be firm. The Premier League have to put their foot down and say, if you don't play ball, then the season's going to be cancelled. You're not going to get, um, you know, your TV money. In my opinion, they should have withheld some of that. I don't know if they have. I don't know if they will. I don't know the situation around that. But there's got to be some impact on the clubs that are not playing ball because they're not playing ball for the right reasons. If they were coming out and saying, we don't feel it's safe, we don't feel our players are, are ready to come back, I'm okay with that and I back that. But I don't back teams moaning about home advantage when home advantage doesn't seem to have been a thing for them all season. We also heard that um, it's likely to be a significant amount of time before fans are allowed to return to Premier League stadiums. And I said it on, on a podcast last week, that I would be very surprised if football fans are allowed to return to stadiums before 2021. And I think that is the case. I think we're going to see that. I think that, um, you know, they're, they're looking for a vaccine before that is allowed. And I understand that. I think mass gatherings are really, really not what we need right now. I think they are avoidable. And I think as long as games are broadcast, yes, it's not ideal. Um, it's not the way we want to watch football um, but perhaps we'll appreciate when we do get to go again how much it means to us. And I guess in the interest of public safety, it is absolutely the right thing to keep people away from football stadiums until uh, this thing passes, until we have a vaccine and until uh, we can guarantee that the death rate is not going to go up and shoot back up once more. Um, I've spoken about uh, the other bits and pieces uh, you know, the, the sporting integrity and, and all that. And I think with that, it is already been compromised because like I've already said, we cannot possibly resume the competition under the same circumstances by which we've played two thirds of it. And is that anybody's fault? Absolutely not. It's just what's happened. It, it's the way of the world at the moment. It's sad. It's harsh um, on some of those teams, etc. But for me, there is no perfect solution to this crisis. There is no perfect idealistic way of getting football back up and running without upsetting anyone. So a decision has to be made and we have to push forward with it. And whether that decision is to play the games at neutral venues, if they think it's safe and they can do that without risking people or to scrap the season, I'm OK with either of those as long as a decision has been made for the right reasons and not because Brighton and West Ham and Aston Villa and a number of other clubs. And I'm only naming those clubs because they're the ones that have been reported. But as long as they're not the reason that we're making wrong decisions um, because they're complaining about playing games at home, um, then, you know, I can back what the authorities decide to do can't back people using this to drive their own personal agendas and just try and save their business from financial collapse um, in the cases of some. Now, um, the Bundesliga, of course, returns this weekend um, and it starts on Saturday. Well, there's a game on Friday night, my apologies, but the big game that we'll be focusing on is uh, Borussia Dortmund against Schalke. Of course, da David Wagner, formerly of Huddersfield Town, manages Schalke nowadays. Dortmund still in the hunt for the Bundesliga title. And you, I'll be bringing you live commentary of that uh, for Total Football Analysis. I'm pleased to announce a, a partnership with Total Football Analysis. And I'll be joined by Lee Scott, who is one of the game's leading football analysts. He provides 
all sorts of uh, analytical data and analysis to some of the top clubs in world football, um, to some of the best scouts, to agents, to, you know, I know he's working on a project for a Premier League club at the moment. So he is a real, real top analyst. And I'm delighted that I'll be joined uh, by Lee to be bringing you that commentary. If you haven't already, download the Hot Mic app um, and uh, give Total Football Analysis a uh, follow, sign up using their promo code TFA2020 and you'll be able to tune in. We'll be bringing you live games um, from throughout Europe as and when they resume from the MLS, from the European competitions too, when all that gets back up and running. And um, as you guys know, I, I do a bit of commentary here and there and I'm really proud um, to have a regular gig now and, and, and one with such an exciting company uh, and upcoming company as well. So uh, really look forward to that. And I hope some of you can join us as well um, as we'll be providing you an alternative soundtrack uh, to some of your favorite football matches over the coming months. Fingers crossed. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, leave us a review, etc., etc. You know the drill by now. And we'll be back very, very soon with another episode of the Chronicles of Aguda. And hopefully we'll have a provisional Premier League start date and we'll have uh, some more Arsenal-related topics to discuss. We'll be back later on in the week with the Social Club and uh, we'll catch you then. So until the next time, take care of yourselves, stay safe, stay home. And if you do go to the park, keep your distance. Take care. Cheers.